Okay, this arm is a bit different, a little more detailed actually. So we'll start on the back here with muscles. Here's infraspinatus muscle, teres minor, teres major, long head of the triceps, lateral head of the triceps, brachii, medial head of the triceps, brachii. From the back, we can see the quadrangular space here and the triangular space. Quadrangular space houses an artery and a nerve, axillary nerve, posterior circumflex humeral artery. Coming through the triangular space is another artery called scapular circumflex artery. You can see our brachialis muscle, the deltoid would cover this part of the arm. This is pec major. This is your biceps brachii. This would be the short head here, attaching to the coracoid process. Long head is down in there. This is the coracobrachialis muscle. Teres major again, subscapularis. Brachial plexus has kind of been taken out. You can see some remnants, but you'd have your axillary nerve here. You can see your posterior circumflex humeral artery and your axillary nerve. This nerve right here is your musculocutaneous nerve, I think. We follow this down into the forearm. We can see clearly where the nerves are branching off. So this one right here is going to be ulnar. It's going to go all the way down. This here is median, going right through the middle of the arm. Here's median again here. Here's ulnar. And then you can see radial again coming around the lateral side of the elbow and giving off branches that will feed the top, the top part of the arm. Following the artery, we would have axillary artery up here. I'm going to follow that down into brachial. Remember, brachial splits into ulnar and radial. Ulnar and radial. Radial will continue down with radial nerve. Ulnar goes through this muscle here. Sends off a continuation of ulnar with the ulnar nerve, but also you have your common interosseous here. Common interosseous, remember, gives off two branches, anterior interosseous artery and posterior interosseous artery. And if you look at this model, you can see that one poking behind the muscles. The anterior interosseous runs here with a branch of the median nerve, which is this big thick one here. So here's ulnar artery, radial artery going down into the hand. Here's your superficial palmar arch. Okay, let's back up and do some of these muscles. So we did the upper arm muscles, we'll do the lower arm muscles now. Here are your flexors. Here's your common flexor tendon. So this right here is your flexor carpi radialis. There's your tendon. This is your pulmaris longus and tendon. This is your flexor carpi ulnaris and tendon. And this is your flexor digitorum and your tendons. This is pronator teres. Flexor digitorum, by the way, this is flexor digitorum superficialis. I forgot to say that last time. So those long tendons are flexor digitorum superficialis. This muscle is your flexor digitorum profundus. Okay, we'll look at some extensors. This is brachia radialis. And then if we look at our extensors, here's our common extensor tendon back here. You've got your extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis. You have your extensor digitorum and tendons here in the hand. And then you have your extensor carpi ulnaris here. And your anconius is a little tiny one by the elbow. And we have these two muscles if, with the thumb. We have our abductor pollicis longus and our extensor pollicis brevis, and this is our extensor pollicis longus tendon. 
the hand you can also see the inner tendinous connections here. You can see your dorsal carpal arch vessels. Those are blood vessels coming off of radial and ulnar artery. And you have metacarpal arteries, dorsal metacarpal arteries and dorsal metacarpal nerves, as well as dorsal digital arteries and nerves. This right here is your first dorsal interosseous, second dorsal interosseous, third, fourth. Radial artery, ulnar artery again to give you superficial palmar arch, common palmar digital arteries branching into proper palmar digital arteries. The nerves are named the same. Common palmar digital nerve, proper palmar digital nerve. This is the adductor for the thumb. So this would be transverse head and oblique would be deep to that. This is your flexor pollicis longus tendon flexor pollicis brevis muscle, abductor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis would be underneath. Here you've got your flexor digiti minimi and your abductor digiti minimi. Here's your transverse carpal ligament and your car uh, carpal tunnel underneath where that median nerve is coming out. Oh, I did forget extensor digiti minimi. We did, uh, we did extensor digitorum here, this is extensor digiti minimi, and then this is extensor carpi ulnaris, and anconius up here. These muscles here, attached to those tendons of the flexor digitorum, superficialis here, are your lumbricals. Okay, we're looking at this guy again. We'll do some more brachial plexus on here. This is really good for being able to see the roots and the trunks and the cords and the divisions of the brachial plexus. So if you look over here where all the muscles are removed, you can see where the spinal nerves come right off of the spinal cord. So we can count those. C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. So those would be the roots. This section right here is going to be your trunks. So you can see C5 and C6 come together. They form a Y, and they make superior trunk. C7 is all by itself for middle trunk. C8 and T1 come together and form a Y for inferior trunk. Superior, middle, inferior trunk. Now each trunk gives off two divisions, one anterior and one posterior. So here's a close-up of the divisions. So here's our superior trunk, divisions, anterior, posterior. Here's our middle trunk, divisions, anterior, posterior. And here's our inferior trunk, divisions, posterior, anterior. Okay, and then our divisions are going to come together to form our cords. So the anterior division of superior trunk and the anterior division of middle trunk come together to form lateral cord. The anterior divisions of, well, the anterior division of the inferior trunk forms the medial cord all by itself. And then all three of the posterior divisions, posterior division of superior trunk, posterior division of middle trunk and posterior division of inferior trunk come together, one, two, three, to form the posterior cord. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords. C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, superior trunk, middle trunk, inferior trunk, anterior division of superior trunk, posterior division of superior trunk, anterior division of middle trunk, posterior division of middle trunk, posterior division of inferior trunk, anterior division of inferior trunk, lateral cord, 
medial cord, posterior cord. Now there's no nerves on here. So coming off of your lateral cord, you would have your musculocutaneous nerve diving into coracobrachialis, and you'd have a contribution to the median nerve. From medial cord, you'd have ulnar nerve and a contribution to the median nerve. That would form your N M structure there. And then behind the axillary artery, you would have your radial nerve and your axillary nerve coming from posterior cord. And we saw those on the arm.